Before we start today's amazing video, I have an announcement. The time has finally come. I've been officially drafted to the front lines of battle thanks to you and Raid Shadow Legends. Regards to my loved ones. The verdict is out and the truth unveiled. You all made your voice heard and we heard it. The champion that'll be receiving the JonTron theme skin is the mighty, the valiant, Stagnite. Introducing Gilded Glider. Yes, it's true. I had the honor of collaborating with the brilliant minds at Raid to deliver a custom skin for all of you that just oozes with that JonTron charm. Look at those marvelous, iconic JT cogs with embossed lettering, the Radiant Phoenix Jacques making an appearance there on the shield, the feather plume and the particle effects on the helmet and halberd, mm, anatomically accurate green cheek conjure wings there on the cape. Uh, I seriously can't get over that part. How unique is that? You're not gonna get that anywhere else, okay? Mainly because uh, no one knows what green cheeks are. And frankly, they're not really as uh, good in battle as like an eagle or a hawk, but they are cuter. But wait, you mean to tell me it gets even better? Well, the skin is completely free. If you're new to Raid or thinking about giving it a shot, download the game using the link in my description and simply use the promo code on screen here. Just wang that bad boy in and you'll be in possession of both the Stagnite Champion and my custom skin. Lucky you. And as for all you Raid veterans, don't worry, there's good news for you too. You'll also get a chance to snatch up both my skin and Stagnite through special in-game tournaments starting August 7th, so keep your eyes peeled. And seriously, a massive thank you to Raid for letting me be a part of something so awesome and supporting my ability to make videos for you guys throughout all these years. And of course, a thank you to all of you who voted and made this a possibility. Gilded Gliders, to arms! Hello. Today I'm here to talk to you about something that affects thousands of Americans one time. And what, this? Oh, I, I didn't even see this, I didn't even know this was here. What, you think I'm trying to cash in on that renewed international interest in submarines? You think I'm trying to dip into that sweet, sweet, timely June 22nd Google Trends spike? Disgusting, that's really what you think of me? I would never do that. I'm here for the disaster tangentially related to that one, the Titanic, this, the, bo the, the boat that sank. Here comes a new challenger! I keep trying to right this ship, but those icebergs just keep on a coming. That's right, I'm making yet another video about the Titanic. How is it even possible? And God knows at this point, you know, it might not even be the last one. Uh, also, I definitely wasn't already planning this video five months ago before a certain international incident occurred and captured the global imagination, you know? Couldn't be me, you know, rushing this video forward in production to capitalize on a trend and still being late, so it's not even trending anymore. I'm a man of principles. Anyways, look at this, check this out. Tell me, what do an Australian mega mogul and a cruise liner have to do with each other in the year of our Lord 2023? If you said sequel to the Titanic, literally called Titanic 2, <coughs> uh, you'd be a suspiciously good guesser, but also unfortunately correct. Oh, I'm making that up? You're calling me a liar? Well, why don't you tell that to Clive National Living Treasure Palmer, the man of the hour and the brains behind the operation to resurrect the doomed vessel. Uh, by the way, I'm dead serious. That is officially his title. He's one of a hundred people to have the designation of National Living Treasure in Australia. Oh, and sh uh, by the way, I should mention, he's the only one on the list where it specifies specifically placed on list after his staff were instructed to vote for him, so. Mm. We're in for a good one. If you've never heard of Clive Palmer, just know he's a force to be reckoned with, okay? He's an Australian billionaire, industrial magnate, and politically outspoken citizen. Uh, just for some reference on the kind of guy we're talking about here, he has a real life dinosaur park and three billion Australian dollars, which I presume still converts to a decent amount of real world money. If there's anyone that could bring back this boat, it's him. And mainly because I think he's the only one who wants to do it. He's even gone so far as trying to hype up public interest to complete the project, uh, releasing PR videos such as the official Titanic 2 promo video, awesome. Showcasing his vision of how he would faithfully recreate the ship in all its glory. But my, my favorite part of this video is just how he goes up to a bunch of random people on the street and he's like, what do you think of this idea? And they're just completely confused in a realistic way. To build another replica of that, it's gonna cost them a lot of money, isn't it? I think it's interesting. Are they planning to sail it or just use it as a museum? Is it for art or for use or for, use. for uh? full size? Are they actually going to sail it or is it just huh? Titanic two? I'm on crack and even I think that's whack. <laughs> Anyways, empty your pockets right now. Everything. Yeah, I'm serious. But how could such a task be accomplished, you might ask? Well, thanks to investigative journalist Ray Martin, 60 Minutes Australia provides us the answer, as well as an all-access pass behind the man, the myth, 
the National Living Treasure. Let's find out together. Mention the name Clive Palmer and everything that comes to mind is big. Big money, big ideas, big opinions. Now right off the bat, that's sus. I feel like you're being a bit cheeky. Well, uh, down here in the description, they made sure to put big in all capitals, so. No, I'm, I'm sure that was just, that, that, that was just, caps lock was on. That's all it was. One of Australia's richest men, he's also one of the most outspoken. But what he loves even more than a good stoush is a grand idea. A stoush? We're gonna have to get a price check on that. A stoush Australian slang? Uh, okay, a fight or brawl. Uh, so he likes to go to rumble and tumble, okay? That's our man, that's our man Clive. You see, he's building an updated near-perfect replica of the legendary luxury cruise liner that sank 100 years ago. Clive doesn't know what it'll cost. In a typical Clive style, he doesn't seem to care. Well, I mean, you know, that's fair. He's got the entrepreneurial spirit. Sky's the limit, or should we say ocean floor is the limit. Uh, either way, let's hear him out. Building a new Titanic may be the boldest of Clive Palmer's crazy ideas. Maybe. How about a life-size T-Rex? Oh, would you look at that? He's perfectly qualified. He's already resurrected the bones of one, uh, you know, cataclysmic event. And the movie where they do that thing also ends completely fine. So as far as I'm concerned, we're two for two. Can I actually just ask you a question a famous Queenslander once said? Yeah. Please explain. Fair question. I get where you're coming from, but that's a dinosaur? That's a dinosaur, di dino right here. This is a dinosaur, sir. That, that, that's, that's a dinosaur. That's a stegosaurus. Andrew, give me a cool one so I look cool to the audience. Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus. Give me one more so they can ha be friends. <laughs> Megalosaurus. Megalosaurus. Aww. He picked up this struggling five-star resort for an absolute song. He changed its name to the Palmer Coolum Resort and then sacked three quarters of the staff. Uh, as you can see, it's a fantastic food. You can tell by the, the font and the, the, the yellow sign there. Uh, actually, the font's on purpose for the sign. The sign ain't supposed to be yellow. The people who owned it, I think, were going to close it down because it was losing 15 to $20 million a year. Now, easily, it's only losing $3 million a year, uh, unless you count the uh, maintenance costs of the mechanical dinosaur, in which case it's uh, losing about 15 to 20 a year. But it's cooler now. Oh, I guess you. I would like to describe him as an ordinary person, but he's, he's probably not um, anything but ordinary. So here he is with his wife now. I guess they're like interviewing him at his house, but <laughs> why does he look like he's like a little schoolboy sitting next to his wife there like that? Anything but ordinary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think I'm ordinary, right? I don't know what all the fuss is about, really. <laughs> well, if you go come down here, Ray, you'll see all our photos. It's the first time this very private couple has opened up their inner sanctum. There's a President Tahiti and Billy Clinton over there, right? Damn, he's just uh, straight up on Billy terms with President Clinton? Uh, that, that's some serious stuff. And do you find him as sexy as your husband? Oh, no, I find my husband very sexy. Nailed it. 10 out of 10. Ray, we gotta talk. Uh, that was a bit out of pocket. He literally just asked the man's wife right in front of him if she'd rather do the dirty with Bill Clinton. What the hell? That's just messed up for real. Listen, I'm just asking the hard questions. Fuck, marry, or kill. Jimmy Carter. Calvin, C Clive, Clive, please. Just let me finish. Grover Cleveland. Oh, this one's not quite correct. Absolutely. Definitely. Gosh. Absolutely. What did you pay for this? <laughs> Ray, this isn't working how you think it is. Uh, she's not laughing with you. You know, she's looking for routes of escape. She, you've put her in fight or flight. I'm going to take you out here in your high heels. Clive's taking his wife outside like this guy. He, he's, he's crossing the line, right? Like, I don't want to get this wrong. Maybe I'm thinking about this too hard, but he's being kind of fucked up, right? Do you think he'll ask me about the Titanic soon? So you had no idea how wealthy he was when you first started dating him? Um, I guess it wasn't really relevant. Um... Yeah, I was more like focused on like the fact that like uh, I loved and cared for him. But yeah, thinking back, yeah, I'm not sure if I knew. That, is that Anna? Is yeah. that your hair? I used to be very used blonde. To be blonde yeah. Really? That's gonna be you, front page. That looks bad for you. I can, you're screwed. I genuinely can't believe you gave this up at your own free will. Born in Bulgaria, Anna has degrees in law and accountancy. Which unfortunately rules out her being an Eastern European mail order bride. But the good news, she could still be a hit woman. More at 11. Turbocharged Clive has shown there are no toys that he can't buy. You think you're special? You're not, you're not. I get Dobby, dude. I, may, I might need to take a loan out on this one to get it, but that's fine. I can get it. It's easy. That's mine. I can get that. Ah! <laughs> that genuinely scared me. That genuinely scared me. 
thought that was a real spider for a second. That's way too realistic. Good morning, Mr. Connor. Good morning, thanks. People discriminate against me every day by saying I'm a fat bastard or whatever, right? And you're really a fat rich bastard. Oh, nice one, Ray. Nailed him. That's why you're on 60 Minutes Australia. Up top. Or should I say down under? But they don't ask me to talk. They don't ask. They don't even know who I am. Everyone says, get out of the way, Sphere Boy. But no one asks, why are you in the way, Sphere Boy? This is the first class entrance, and that's the, okay. the ballroom. Of course, all this will be air conditioned. Clive's Ship of Dreams, Titanic 2, will be built in China, starting in June of this year, and setting sail in 2016. Supposed to have set sail in 2016? Guess they really missed the bus! By the way, I love how it's implied from these videos that not only does he want to recreate the Titanic itself, but he wants to recreate the time period. Like, even if people did theoretically book this in the future, be honest, what are the chances it wouldn't just devolve into absolute depravity? People twerking a trap music on the front deck swimming pool, crowding around shirtless, chugging natty lights. What are the chances that's not exactly what would happen? Okay, you're not getting this. Uh, this is what you're getting. I'm afraid uh, that whole thing, uh, that went down with the Titanic and uh, she ain't coming back up. Plotting the original course from Southampton to New York. This is about recreating the experience of Titanic 1. You really, you gotta pitch it a different way. You can't just say you're recreating the experience shot for shot of the Titanic 1. That's great and all, I'm all for authenticity. But sometimes you go to a Chinese restaurant, you just want some Kung Pao chicken, some General Tso's, you don't need the pork blood soup, the scorpion on the stick. So maybe, you know, you can make a Tex-Mex version of the boat's course there. Maybe just a loop right around the whole iceberg episode. Is it about dreams or about making money? We'll make a lot of money, but hopefully that, that's, that, that's a byproduct. You see, you never should worry about how much money you make. You should always worry about... Getting it to shore. I completely agree, Clive. A to B, right? That's what we're thinking? Doing it for the right reasons and doing, and doing a good job. Close enough for now. Yeah, we'll get there. If Clive Palmer manages to pull off this monumental Titanic II folly of his, and many people doubt that he will, then his brand new ocean liner will finish up here at the famous Pier 54. Ray, calm down, Jesus! What, what did Mr. Palmer do to you, man? Is this personal? Give him a chance. You're, you're 60 minutes. You can at least try to be objective. If this asshole ever gets his shit together, I mean, yeah, that, that's where it'll be. That's where it'll show up. I had to, uh, for the sake of accuracy, I had to fly all the way out here and point at that. But uh, we all know it's not gonna happen. And uh, by the way, Clive, whatever this is, this, so they put some kind of caterpillar here now. I don't know. That wasn't here 10 years ago, but on the way in, you're gonna have to dodge that. I love Australian people. I love it. He's a great guy. God bless him. No God bless him. I had a body like that once, right? It's all gone now. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, listen, uh, let, let's get back to the armored vehicle. I don't really like the way uh, Elmo and Batman are eyeing me up right now. Is that is this normal? Is that normal here? They, they do that? <laughs> yeah, let's go back to the car. This quintessential Queenslander says he's making so much money right now that he can't spend it all. It's not about money, right? I keep trying oh, to convince you. <laughs> Dude, it's so cringy in almost every scene. Like, for real, he just keeps mentioning money. And then Clive's like, it's not about the money, dude. Is it about dreams or about making money? Is money a motivation? Not really, not at all. Was it ever? Never. When you were broke? Were you driven by ego? I don't have an ego. By the way, it seems pretty clear at this point that he's trying to do, like, a hit piece on Clive here, but it's just completely backfiring on him. He's just making himself look so bad. And, like, multiple times in this spot, he's just gone, way, way beyond what's even approaching acceptable. So towards the end of the documentary here, they end up going to this big gala event that Clive has thrown, and I'm not really sure what it is they're celebrating, because uh, as far as I remember, the, the boat's barely even ink on paper yet, but... Uh... When Titanic 2 sails into New York, you'll be able to say that you were here, that you were here tonight when it all began. But what you will not have is plausible deniability. That is gone. You're on all 12 of my cameras right now, live. He wants to convince all the non-believers that they should all jump on board the Palmer Love Boat. This contingent looks a bit skeptical. They, they don't look too pleased. They're like, the conga line? We're doing, we're doing the conga line? The, the boat's not even on the water. What'd they say this is for again? Clive may be our wealthiest man. Even if to 18-year-old no, daughter Emily... Daughter. Does he embarrass you sometimes? <laughs> Every day. Every <laughs> time. <laughs> oh my God! Th this fucking guy! So, do you regret being born to your father? Tell me, does it bother you that you share this man's DNA? Uh, into the mic, please, if you don't mind. Right there. 
Is he getting better with this or is he just getting worse as you get older? Now stick with me here, this is important. Which one of these obviously better dad candidates would you have preferred was your dad? Yeah, into the lapel mic? Yeah, you're doing great, just right here. I'm just, I think, getting worse, <laughs> I would say. Yeah, I like my dad, yeah, I like my dad, thanks. Uh, who are you? Yeah, no, yeah, no, I like my dad, yeah. So anyways, as this whole thing draws to an end, Clive and Ray sit down for one last heart to heart. And Clive has some words of inspiration for us all. My mother said to me at a very early age, she said, Clive, well, life will tell you what you can't do. It's best for you to find out what you can do. And that's what I've been doing. So far, I haven't found out what I can't do, Ray. And then immediately after this, he found out he couldn't do Titanic 2 and it's still not done. And then China tried and couldn't do it either and it's in a scrapyard. So, what do we learn today, kids? Maybe it's time we finally put this boat to rest permanently. Cause nothing good has ever come from rustling around in its graveyard. Sorry, what'd you say? Titanic 666 is streaming right now on Tubi Originals? Oh, this boat will never die. Keep it coming. Oh, I love it. Feed me the slot. Now that's not the kind of thing you want to see rocking up on your doorstep if you're a citizen of, a, of an Axis country, eh? Knock, knock, it's the US government. We brought the ghost ship. I don't know what it's for, but it's not good for you.